Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I want you to really think about this one this morning. The only difference between mostly sunny and partly cloudy, is the weatherman's outlook on life. How true. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. We need a patriot with a Pledge of Allegiance this morning. Come on, good morning. Morning, Zeb at the Ranch, and I'm so glad to be back in the saddle yesterday and today, feeling lots better. Thank you very much. And, of course, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best of all your tire needs. And, of course, uh, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. And, of course, Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn, Seniors living the good life with friends. All right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Well, good morning, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At a boy wheels right now, let's go to the weather forecast brought to everybody by K&R Rental. These are really good folks that have put a lot of time and effort into having an inventory of the best tools and equipment you need for whatever construction project or project you need to finish. Everything. It's right there. I mean, even their front yard is just full. You check it out at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn on the Burley Paul Highway. The best serving you k and r rental right now here's gina with the weather fairly nice day for today and we're on a warming trend for the rest of the week here's what's your weather forecast partly sunny skies we are expecting a high of 38 winds out of the west at about eight miles an hour for tonight some clouds going to be rolling in steady temperature right around 33 tomorrow mostly cloudy skies high of 42 with an overnight low of 31 for friday we do have a slight chance of rain showers mostly in the afternoon mostly cloudy skies high of about 40 and then for saturday partly sunny 43 it's like mid 40s for sunday monday that's a look at your weather forecast for us up at the Thank you, Gina, and brought to everybody by Roger and the crew. Roger and out over at K&R Rental. Mm-hmm. If you're not sure what you need for the various jobs and tools and equipment, give them a call, 678-3122. K&R Rental. They are the best. I want to also do a lot of bragging on some folks that have been helping us for a long time, and that's Daryl's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You know, if you don't have the time to sit there and go, well, i got to go to the laundromat and do my washing, well, wait a minute, stop. They'll bring your washing into Daryl's. They'll wash, dry, fold, and iron all your clothes, just like Mama used to. Wow. Uh, they are the best at dry cleaning and washing your clothes, getting you looking really, really good. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You stop in, see those wonderful people today. One other business before we start taking your calls. I want to remind everybody about Ramsey Heating and Electric. Hello, Rita. Hello, everybody over there. They literally, and I mean this, have all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. And they've been in business almost seven years decades. Wow! Almost as old as I am. And uh, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call, 678-0459. They're open 730 to 5, Monday through Friday. Believe me, they're the best. Ramsey Heating and Electric. 
lunch bunch. I want to tell you that we're going to have Lunch Bunch tomorrow. Tomorrow, please, folks, I need your support on Lunch Bunch tomorrow. I apologize to you for not plugging it earlier, but I've been kind of down and under the weather for days leading to Tuesday yesterday and didn't get a lot of things taken care of like I should. But Lunch Bunch is going to be at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner at 611 North Overland in Burley tomorrow at 1130. And we want to say thank you to our gift certificate donor, Walmart, Smith's Foods, Handsome Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin, and Denny's. Thank you very much. To go over and eat oh, and have a great lunch at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. All right, folks. I almost fell out of my lazy boy last night when, or I should say this morning, pardon me, it happened at about 4.10 this morning, I believe it was. When at the presidential news conference that was being held in Davos, Switzerland, prior to President Trump leaving and getting on Air Force One and coming back to the United States, a reporter asked the president if he, the president, would adhere to the climate change remarks made by 17-year-old Greta Thunberg. I mean, you got to admit, this is almost uh, in the loony bin. To think that a 17, just recently turned 17-year-old girl, that has been propped up and educated and schooled on what to say to condemn the United States and President Trump for not joining in this idiocy of climate change with all the European countries, Greta Thunberg, we're going to listen and adhere to what a 17-year-old girl says? Oh, please. I mean, if we're at that point in uh, international relationships with other countries and uh, trying to figure things out, we're in bad shape. Uh, I cannot believe that a 17-year-old, again, propped up by the left, paid for by the left, is going to tell our president anything. And I thought he handled the answer very well. Uh, He kind of, uh, in a very polite way, and he was polite, poo-pooed Greta Thunberg's uh, knowledge, which there is none, and went on to the next question. But it it was almost just really dumb of this reporter to assert that question into the press conference thinking that President Trump is going to kowtow to a 17-year-old? Please. Please. Calls welcome 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Want to remind you, too, about our friends at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. Oh, yeah, they urge you to be there or be square on January 30th next week on Thursday at the annual installation banquet. It's going to be held at the Best Western Burley Inn and Convention Center. Doors open at 6, you bet. And it's going to include dinner, auction, installation of board of directors, uh, honoring outstanding individuals in the area. I'm telling you, get your tickets now. Call 679-4973. Going to be a lot of fun. Uh, calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Hi, Tony. I don't think people really understand uh, what this energy thing is doing. What would it do with us military? How would it affect us militarily throughout the world if we had to reduce energy that is being used for military purposes to protect us all over the world and in this country? Tony, what you just said was very astute, and I appreciate your opinion. I don't think the left, well, I know the left, and they're not the brightest, smartest people in the world at all. And we have some of which write letters to the local rag, our Times News. And they don't realize the ominous and enormous threat that going green really represents, uh, not only to society and progress and families and costs and the economy, but they forget about, like you just said, the military. The military and all of the tanks 
bikes and all of the automobiles, the Jeeps, everything uh, converging on solar or wind or green energy supplies and or over uh, fossil fuels. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Well, this Democratic Party is finished, as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to know what kind of an answer I would get from the press if I said, what are you going to do when these people come across the border and they start laying on your front lawn, damaging your neighborhoods? Are you going to invite these people into your neighborhoods? Well, I... Now, i tell you what, Tony, next week on, and I want you to be very aware of this. Hold on, let me check what day I'm going to have him on. I believe it is Wednesday. Write this down on your calendar. Next Wednesday from 10 to 11, I'm going to have Steve Hartkin on the program. And Steve, of course, uh, big notoriety with all of his years at the head of the Times News organization left. He was a very strong conservative and still is. And he's got a brand new book out. And we're going to be talking about refugees. This man, Steve Hartkin, has a very, very uh, good viewpoint as to what we need to do and what we shouldn't be doing by allowing more refugees into our area. So I'm going to kind of table your thought there for a minute because you know already how I feel about this. And next Wednesday, be sure and be listening and call in. This news media is nothing more than pond scubs, as far as I'm concerned. I'm, uh, I got an absolute agreement with you there. So thank you, Tony. God bless you and Mary. Have a wonderful day. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I want to remind you about Dino Septic Service. Now, a lot of people, when you say septic service, they go, ooh. Yeah, I know. But you don't want to be out there pumping a septic tank. You don't want to be out there trying to get sewer and sink drain lines clean. No, no, no. Let the professionals serve you, and that is, of course, Dino Septic Service. Backhoe services, water and sewer lines installed, septic inspections, all of this and more at Dino Septic Service. And the numbers to call, 436-6526 or 678-1638. Fast, fair, friendly service. Dino's septic service with the big truck that says, Smells Cargo, on the way. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. Yes, my friend. I do agree with you and disagree with you on the people on this climate change. Why? I agree with you that they have no idea what's going to happen if they go down this road and those are the people that have been brainwashed and are following the people that are pushing it the people that are pushing it know exactly what's going to happen because they will not go without power or anything and it is all about control and that's what they want well where's your disagreement with me that the people pushing it or you said the people that uh, are uh, doing this have no idea what's going to happen down the road. No, 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 I didn't. No, not in that type of verbiage. They know exactly what's going on, and I've stated many, many times, and I've got it all on tape, Doug, that they absolutely know what's going on because control has been the issue. I've said that many times on my program. That seven-letter word is all they're looking for. They want us to suffer. They want us basically to go back to a caveman attitude of burning buffalo dung or whatever to keep warm. They don't care about humanity. Exactly right. Exactly right. So maybe I misheard you this morning, but that's... No, no this, is a, this is a very contrived, very organized skill set uh, that's been arranged by the left and Soros and others to have more control. Of, if you take energy away from the general public that is basically cost-effective... And you take energy away, and then you go after their freedom of speech with the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, their right to protect themselves. Baby, you've got the population right in the palm of your hand. Yeah, and add health care in on top of that. Got it. Got it. Absolutely. But, yeah, all you got to do is take a look at North Korea, and that's what we'd be like if the elite uh, controlled all of the health care, all of the energy and just give us what they thought we needed and that's exactly what america and the world would look like okay explain something to me 
I know you talk to a different circle of friends than I have, and uh, it's good to have all kinds of input. Has anybody in your circle of friends, and be honest with me right now, has anybody come out and stated to you in a conversation that they are glad that our president is under this idiocy of impeachment with the Democrats? Has anybody really told you that, wow, I'm so excited, we're going to go to green energy with the likes of Idaho Power. We're going to just get rid of everything that's working, and we're going to jump into a new pool of water and probably pay a heck of a lot more. Do you hear these things? Nope. I do not hear anybody, even people that disagree with President Trump, want to go down that road. Where are these people? I mean, honestly, think about it. I took some polling over the last couple of weeks from people that work in hospitals, doctors. I've taken a little polling with lawyers. I've talked to people that are involved in agriculture. I've talked to people down in Texas that are in the horse business. I've talked to people that are in the automobile manufacturing business. I've talked to people in California that have a bait or, pardon me, a boat manufacturing business. Doug, I have talked to so many people. I have yet, and I'm being very honest with my audience this morning found one person that wants this mess with impeachment and i've never talked to one single person that wants a reliability on green energy no uh, and you if only place you will find it will be in the bubble in washington dc on pelosi and schumer and those guys who want absolute power the a couple of people, a couple of people, Doug, that I question, and I want you to respond to this, and then I've got to make room for some, for some other calls. But a couple of people said, "Wait a minute! If they, the government, would back off of solar and wind power and let it be a free enterprise system through private works, they would be in support of letting them try to pursue it. Let them try to make it bigger and better, whatever. But keep the energy that we have so that we all of a sudden don't fall off a cliff. Exactly. If you remember back in, well, you're not quite old enough to remember this, but the government tried to figure out how to uh, create an airplane so men can fly, so people could fly. And the government put a lot of money into this. And it come up short. Nothing happened. And then the Wright brothers privately yep. accomplished it. Yep. If you guys don't believe me, look back in your history. It is a fact. I am so concerned about where we are right now. Last evening, uh, when we came in from feeding, I had a chance to talk to an individual on the phone. And the naivete and the blasé attitude of the American public, this gentleman told me he fears for the vote not going to the polls, the vote not going to the polls in November because people think it's going to be a slam dunk. It is not. It's very serious. It is serious. It is serious. And the, the left is trying to push that, that it's a slam dunk so you don't have to go vote. So they have a chance. Yeah. So everybody, you've got to get out and vote. Everybody. I'm going to keep on hammering. Whether you think it's worthwhile or not, you have to go vote. Absolutely. Yeah. Doug, appreciate your call. Quickly about the seniors, and then i got to run. i got another call. All righty. Everybody, let's take care of our senior centers. They're struggling a little, struggling, I'm sorry, a little bit with uh, donations, and the government cut back on some of the programs go eat at a senior center you will leave enlightened uh, uh, by the way after the program uh, i've got to do some taping but about 11 30 i'll be free if you could give me a call on another note i'd appreciate that Okey-dokey. all right doug thank you all right caller number two i'll be right there don't go away i want to remind everybody on mondays we give away a dozen cookies to sophie's chatterbox what a wonderful bakery what a phenomenal restaurant you eat over there you're going to be full of great great food you better believe it and don't forget their bakery they make everything from pies to wedding cakes to cookies you name it sophie's chatterbox 530 east street in rupert on the square really really good people all 
also, real quick, don't forget, next Monday, uh, we'll be back in the saddle again to have the Idaho Legislative Update that's sponsored by Handy Truck Lines. We really appreciate them. They've been serving businesses all over the Northwest for many, many years. Handy Truck Lines brings you the Idaho Legislative Update. Caller, you've been patient. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. The menu for the lunch today is birthday and anniversary dinner. That means we're going to have turkey and dressing, uh, cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, salad, and yummy dessert. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe Taylor, it sounds great, and it's the best buy in town. So we'll send everybody over to the Senior Center to get a lunch, and takeout meals are what, five bucks? Thank you. All right, Joe. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Joe. Take care of yourself. What a nice man right there. Thank you very much. All right, calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I got to admit, folks, I failed in my duty to watch and take notes of the impeachment hearing yesterday in its entirety. I could not do it. I tried. I tried. I sat there, and with pen in hand and notepad on my knees, I diligently tried to watch the most boring and ridiculous thing I have ever watched on TV. I got to admit, finally, finally, I weakened, and I turned on reruns of The Andy Griffith Show. And that made much more sense. There was much more common sense back in those days. These moronic Democrats pushed the first day of the trial to 2 a.m. in the morning Eastern time this last evening. It was unbelievable. And then they turn around, and like Justice John Roberts being the overseer of this mess... Had to get up early this morning and report back to the Supreme Court to help make uh, opinions on various cases. Wow. But they were there till 2 a.m. Eastern time. Now they're going back for a second day today, and it's going to be nothing more than the same. If you listen to any of those Democrats, the main thing that came out of their mouth was this. We had the impeachment hearings in the House, but evidently we didn't do a very good job because now we've got a need for much more information and much more input from witnesses. They're not satisfied. They want to keep this wheel turning and turning and turning. So evidently, the haste and the hurry over in the House of Representatives was all for naught. And Botox Nancy and the rest of this horrendous gathering of Democrats, why didn't they do due diligence, do due diligence, (laughs) and get all the facts and question all the witnesses at that time so that when they finalized the articles of impeachment that were paraded like a Star Wars movie down the halls to the Senate, they had everything in completeness. And we could have had two days to where, okay, this is this, this is this, this is an order, this, and then had a vote. And then had a vote. Yay or nay, Trump stays, Trump goes, whatever the case might be. But no, they want to elongate this thing. They want to create their own rules. They want to create more people. And you know what? Barbara Water, Maxine Waters, Barbara Waters, good heavens, that's even worse. Maxine Waters from California kind of summed it up. Hey, if we don't get him impeached this time, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. This is insanity. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, uh, this impeachment thing is not about the impeachment. What it's all about is to break... Donald Trump's spirit, break him physically and mentally. That's all it is. And they're going to keep pounding him, hoping that one day he breaks down with a heart attack or something. So the the impeachment is just a cover-up for an assassination attempt on Trump. 
I tend to agree with everything you say, except I would disagree with you on the point of Trump throwing his hands up and giving up. I don't think the man will. I don't think the man can. I think it's in his makeup that he's going to stay and fight until the last dog winds off into the distance. I just think that this man, Donald Trump, deserves our support. He's done an amazing job with foreign countries, trade, everything else. And for the Nimrods out there that are on the side of the Democrats, I pity them. Well, the Democrats had gotten in instead of Donald Trump. The United States, the flag would be pulled down from the White House, and we'd have either a Muslim flag up there or the hammer and sickle. I agree. And I totally agree with you. I just don't think the American public realizes how absolutely stupid what the Democrats are doing and how it's affecting this country. Tony, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, buddy. God bless. Yeah, here's our president over in Davos, Switzerland. Here are the world leaders for this economic summit. Trump gets up there and gives a speech about this, 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 and this, and the list goes on and on, a litany of accomplishments for our economy. Oh, the left, you know, like CNN and MSNBC. Those people over there aren't smart enough to figure out that, yes, what he said was true and how beneficial it's been to our country. And the world leaders, caller, stay with me just a minute. The world leaders that are over there in Switzerland are sitting there going, uh, yeah, Trump's done a great job. Trump is doing a great job with the economy. And does it help us? You better bet your baby bumpkin. And uh, everybody's high on him. But then he gets on a plane and he comes home this morning. And he comes home to the absolutely insidious evil left trying to impeach him. Duh. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Trump ought to drag this out for the next six months. He's got enough proof on half the Democrats and, uh, and all of the uh, rhinos. He could put them all in jail and have it shut them up. You know, I, I always appreciate your call and your thoughts, but I'm going to disagree with you. Uh, I would like to see today finish up, day number two, where all the articles that were in that impeachment are covered. And then I would like to see someone like Senator Cruz or uh, maybe McConnell himself stand up and say, okay. We have listened to all this balderdash, baloney, or whatever B word you want to put in. I can't insert one word on the air. And now I'm calling for a vote. And I would love to see the Senate vote. They have absolutely acquitted Trump and go on about the people's business. I'm fed up with the garbage from the Democrats. I'm fed up with them trying to transition and change the rules. And I would love to see them get slapped in the face. I'm listening. Well, the way uh, to do that is to uh, start uh, prosecuting them. Trump has the proof. All he needs is a prosecutor willing to take these people to court and let them prove their innocence. I, I agree with that point, but I'm just going to say this. I don't want any more time wasted on this absolute foolishness. The people in this country deserve better. The situations that surround our country deserve better. They deserve due diligence from our elected officials. And right now, thanks to Adam Schiff and Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, we're not getting what we deserve. We're not getting the bang for the buck, buddy. No, nope, all we're getting is BS. I agree. And, uh, I think Trump, uh, it's a perfect opportunity for him to slam them down. All right, well, I appreciate like I said, I appreciate your opinion. i got to run, but I know where you stand on it. And I, for one, I would agree with you here. I would love to see the little spider web grow bigger and more treacherous for the Biden family. Thank you for your call. Appreciate it. Uh, I want to remind everybody about Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts. We had a little feedback there, and I had trouble hearing that caller. Hopefully it's just maybe that phone. Uh, Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts. Oh, my, have you been in there? Well, if you need equipment 
for lifting and leveling and digging and pushing and carrying. Oh, my. They've got all the deuce on wheel loaders and the excavators. they got all the shapes and sizes of the Bobcats. i got a brand new inventory in there, so please go on in and talk to them today at 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin, and the Napa location. Nobody, excuse me, I almost choked to death. Nobody does it better than Barry Equipment and Rental. You stop in and see them today. All right, come on, callers, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Oh, I've got to get this little story in. Uh, You heard about the huge pro-gun rally in Virginia. Well, the Virginian uh, statehouse is basically comprised of Democrats, which that ought to tell you where I'm headed on this story right now. Well, the thousands upon thousands of people that showed up this last couple of days for a pro-gun rally, no arrests, everybody acted in a very professional, courteous manner. There was no threat. There was none of the white nationalism or the white Nazis or anything else. People were there to very, very safely protest the government trying to change the Second Amendment. Well, there is a restaurant owner. Her name is Lauren Bobert of Shooter's Grill in Rifle, Colorado. Listen to this. Lauren Bobert, the owner, and I talked about her here about six months ago when she confronted Beto O'Rourke. And she came out with a quote, and she said, My restaurant is the safest restaurant in the country. Why? Because every one of her waitresses carry a firearm. They got a pistol on their hip, mama. And she said it's going to stay that way. No one has come into the restaurant, Shooter's Grill, and given anyone any griff or gruff or problem at all. Imagine that. And uh, she said that uh, after garnering national attention when she challenged former 2020 candidate Beto O'Rourke on his controversial gun buyback plan, that it has made her famous, it's made her restaurant famous, but yet people come in very respectfully knowing that all of her waitresses have a colt on their hip. I love it. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Doesn't it just blow your mind that here you've got Adam Schiff. Did you watch his body language on TV yesterday? Did you take just a few minutes out of your busy day to just watch this bug-eyed, pencil-necked man just stand up there and act like, um, I can't even give a good analogy to Adam Schiff. He's he's so roboticized and uh, so mechanical in his movements and what he says and does. But with all this baloney and all this hype against our president from the Democrats, President Trump's approval ratings are going up higher every day. <laughs> Oh, I chuckle. The Democrats, I think each and every one of them, are carrying a shovel and they're digging a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, and I personally, I think if we turn out at the polls in November and we vote for the re-election of President Donald Trump, I think, and I agree with my dear friend, Dr. Gerard Lomero, when he made the prediction that uh, Donald Trump's going to win in a landslide if... We all go to the polls and do our American duty and vote. And I just wonder, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so interesting to see the total destruction and demise and fragmentation of the Democratic Party. I I think some will set their hair on fire. Some will be running like little lemmings jumping off of a cliff. Oh, my. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hello, Zeb. Yes, ma'am. Good to have you back. Thank you. Uh, these people, Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler, all you have to do is look at them and you want to puke. <laughs> I cannot, I'm so sick and tired of them trying to turn our government into a communistic 
Scouts organization. It's just not right. And I, they need to be stopped somehow. And people better get together in their minds and in their communities and pray for our president to be able to have the strength to outwit them and and ask Heavenly Father to protect him from them. And that everything will and hopefully everything will turn out right. You know something, what you just said was very eloquent. It was spot on. We all need to pray for the betterment of our country, the protection of our president, our leadership, and also uh, do our patriotic duty and go vote in November. And hopefully, like you said, with prayer and doing our job, it'll all come out all right. You have a good day, Jeff. God bless you. Thank you very, very much. What a nice lady. I like her. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. i got to tell you this real quick, this story. It's off the rails away from politics just for a minute, but how many of you... How many of you watched the LSU Clemson National Collegiate uh, Football Championship? And right towards the end of the game, and there's video verifying everything I'm saying, in case you didn't hear about this story, video verifies it. I've seen the video, and it's been on SportsCenter, ESPN, and everything else. And some of the commentators on ESPN were uh, kind of uh, fragmented on how they should approach this issue with Odell Beckham Jr., went to the collegiate game, championship game, was standing on the sideline of the Louisiana State University, and all of a sudden he started going around. When the game was absolutely in hand and it was just down to the last seconds, he went around with a wad, and I mean a wad, of $100 bills, and he started handing out these $100 bills, three, four at a time, to various players on the sidelines for LSU. This was the worst image, the worst public image any stupid person like Odell Beckham Jr. could have done to college athletics. And I was listening the other day to a couple of black commentators on uh, SportsCenter, ESPN. One had it right on the money that this is not the image that college sports needs or should ever have with some overpaid professional athlete, and by the way, he earns this Odell Beckham Jr., earns approximately, listen to this, it'll blow your mind, $800,000 per game to play a game. And he's standing there whipping out $100 bills to LSU, and it's caught on camera. Some people tried to say, oh, well, no, it was Monopoly money. No, you dolts, it was not Monopoly money. It's been verified by even the quarterback of LSU, Joe Scarro, that, hold on a second, I can start, Joe Burrow, pardon me, uh, said that no, it was not Monopoly money, it was real. The kid was the quarterback for LSU, and he's on the sidelines, he ought to know whether the money was real or not. And the picture that was painted by Odell Beckham Jr. just doing this, it just destroys the image of, I think, university and college sports. You know, there's a time to go pro. There's a time to have the money in the pocket. There's a time to play for the coins. But for this man, Odell Beckham Jr., to cheapen college athletics and make a circus out of it, with handing out wads of $100 bills, just ridiculous. What are your thoughts? Give me a call, 436-2244, It was initially said that the bills were novelty bills, but that's not the truth. And an LSU spokesperson uh, on Tuesday morning told the Baton Rouge Advocate newspaper that the money being handed out on the field was counterfeit. No, it wasn't. It was real money. They tried to cover it up and tried to minimize it. But it was real money. 
And, and here's the thing, and this quarterback, Joe Burrow of LSU, said this, and I, I really hold him in high esteem for saying this. If the money being doled out by Beckham was real, which it was, as the quarterback said, it would be a violation of NCAA bylaws. Cash is an example of impermissible benefits that are prohibited by governing body. The NCAA should step in and sue Odell Beckham Jr. I'm serious. Time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Caller, I'll be good. 60 seconds. Don't you go away. Uh, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, right behind the Minidoka Hospital, across from the emergency room, and the number to call for a hearing screening is 312-0957. 312-0957. They are the best at what they do in helping you with any hearing loss or hearing health problems. Please call them today, 312-0957. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Fairly nice day for today, and we're on a warming trend for the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Partly sunny skies. We are expecting a high of 38. Winds out of the west at about 8 miles an hour. For tonight, some clouds could be rolling in. Steady temperature right around 33. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies. High of 42 with an overnight low of 31. For Friday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers mostly in the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies. High of about 40. And then for Saturday, partly sunny 43. It's like mid-40s for Sunday, Monday. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zephyr. Thank you, Gina, and brought to you by our friends that really can help you with the expert diagnostic testing, along with the best technology right there at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Please let them help you. Don't miss what you should be hearing. Call them at 312-0957. Caller, you've been patient. Thank you so much. I have a rhetorical question. I've been practicing rhetorical. Um, so does that make them paid athletes? Uh, you know, as far as a contract and as far as anything else is concerned, as far as being paid athletes, I don't think you could lump that into it. It was just some great big jock that makes tons and tons of money trying to show off and hand extra $100 bills out of his pocket to football players underneath the governing of the NCAA. I find it disgusting, and I think the NCAA, if they had any common sense at all, should start to formulate a court case and a lawsuit against Odell Beckham Jr. for doing this. If there's much better ways that he could have done something with that money, oh, yeah. he could more appropriately made a contribution to the athletic department for yep. that college yep. in honor of the fact that they won their game or whatever, you know, rather than doing something like so show offish like man I'm cool I can hand these guys hundred dollar bills. Well, it, it, you know, he could have done something so much better and so much worthwhile absolutely. than doing it that way. Sharon, the whole thing boils down to this. Uh, th this just shows you a lot of the persona of athletes today that are way, way overpaid for what they do, and then money takes over, and they think that they, the athletes, are the most powerful people on earth, and they can break any rule, they can buy their way out of any problem, they can do what they want, and to reach into your pocket, and the video shows this very clearly, uh, where he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a wad of $100 bills that would choke a thoroughbred running down a racetrack, and starts handing out all these bills to the players and and you know hey hey we did it we did it this is the image that is destroying college athletics right well and the, the fact that the guy get paid $800,000 a game? Well, do the math. Crazy. Do the math. When you sign contracts for like a hundred and some million dollars over a five or six year period, and each year you're playing and being paid for 16 regular season games, and then also the preseason, and then more money is added onto it as bonus money when you go into the playoffs, do the math yourself. Take your calculator and start poking in those millions of dollars and divide it by the games that they play per year and see if I'm not off the mark. That is just un unbelievable and not realistic for life. I, it just, I, that just blows me away. 
Yeah, but it's nothing more than a blatant attempt to break the rules and show everybody, hey, I'm the man. Put your cameras on me. I'm so important. I'm me, 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 me. It's never about the team. It's never about helping the community. It's never about charitable benefits that are going to help somebody in the community. It's me. Put the camera on me. I'm the main person, and I'm fed up with these guys. Yeah, he, he took all the glory away from those players. Yeah. yeah. And, no. and that's really pathetic. Well, I appreciate your call. Make sure that you've got your hands on the wheel in the 10 and 2 position and you're going through a headset talking to me and drive carefully. That's on the speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye. See you later, Sharon. Thank you. Calls welcome 436 2244 1 927 4587. You know, we've just lost. We've lost in this country right and wrong, good and bad, black and white. We've lost it. We've lost it. You know, when I was a kid growing up, and I idolized the football team that was not too far away from me, the Green Bay Packers. I idolized Bart Starr, Paul Horning, Jim Taylor. Skaronsky, Kramer, all of them. And I know Jerry Kramer personally. He's a very, very good man. All of these players in that era, nobody would have thought about going to a college game and reaching into their pocket and handing out $100 bills on the sidelines. This is insane. We've lost the value of what's right and wrong, black and white, and what's good for society. And you get these overpaid jocks, and he is overpaid, and just just standing there and flouting and uh, desecrating the rules of college football and college sports by handing out these wads of $100 bills, we've lost what's right and wrong in this country. It would have tickled me, seriously, to have some security guards come over there and bounce him on the ground with the billy club, tie his hands behind his back, and say, Odell, get out of here. Don't forget our friends at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And I tell you that whatever tires you need, whether you need tires for your car, your pickup, your SUV, or your loaders, or your backhoes, your skid steers, all the way down to your lawnmowers, don't work with anybody or anybody that's less than our great, great friends at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. They've got all the tires. And especially for farmers, I mean, hay and ranchers and dairymen, they've got those big service trucks that can be there and help you right on the farm. Please remember that. They're there to serve you with the best of tires, best of brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley. Yep, the best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Uh, one other quick story i got to get in here this morning, and it's another disgusting story of how I just absolutely detest the left and liberals, and I mean that when I say that. And at the top of my detestability list is Michael Bloomberg that's running for the Democratic nod to be the president. He came out and really denigrated the man by the name of Jack Wilson, that was the hero of that Texas church shooting by taking down the shooter. He was armed in the church, and he took down the shooter that was killing people with a shotgun. And had it not been for Mr. Jack Wilson showing the bravery and his tenacity to see the problem and go after the problem, so many more people could have been killed and injured. He took the shooter out. And Bloomberg comes out and says, no, no, this man should not have a gun. He should not be carrying a gun. Average citizens should not get involved in law enforcement. What? We're going to wait for the cops to show up and bodies are going to be strewn all over the pews in that church because nobody could take him down folks this is idiocy and that's what the left represents idiocy no common sense whatsoever and for bloomberg to go after and say that this man's not a hero he uh, shouldn't have had a gun and only the police should have been called good lord help us all thank goodness 
for Mr. Jack Wilson and what he did to stop that particular shooter permanently. Going to run to the news from CBS in just a moment. Coming up next hour, don't forget Dave Bego and Gregory Wrightstone, just to name a couple of the people that are coming up on Zeb at the Ranch for this Wednesday, January 22. And we got about 33 degrees outside. Quick reminder, Lunch Bunch at Denny's tomorrow at 1130. We want you to be there. Our thanks to Walmart, Smith's Foods, had some Mortuary Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin, Denny's. Going to be a lot of fun. Call your friends and neighbors. We'll see you at Denny's tomorrow morning at 11:30. Here's the news from CBS. Oh, hour number two on a Wednesday, January 2-2, and uh, we're looking forward to a great, great hour with the guests that we have lined up. And don't forget this program brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, serving you with the best and safest of tires for all your vehicles. And, of course, don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. And last but not least, Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. Seniors living the good life with friends. Right now, this really good word for Western Waste. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho Western Way Services, and I want to tell you, they are helping to fight cancer. That's right. They say trash cancer, and they've got a program out to where you can convert your already garbage carts to a pink garbage cart, and then, of course, a lot of the proceeds are going to help fight cancer. I absolutely salute them, and tomorrow on the program at 1023, we're going to find out more about this program. It's called Power in Pink with our friends at Western Way Services. Give them a call, 734-6969. West Western Way Services, always at your disposal. I want to give a great big shout out again. I know that Penny and the rest of the crew over there at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce absolutely are down to the 11th hour of getting everything ready for next Thursday's Minicasha Chamber of Commerce annual installation banquet. It's going to be on Thursday, January 30th at the Best Western Burley Inn and Convention Center. Doors open at 6. Uh huh. Be there. Dinner, auction, installation of uh, board of directors, honoring outstanding individuals. Going to be a great, great night. Don't forget. Contact the Chamber for your tickets now at 679-4973. And uh, one other good word, and that's my dear, dear friends over to Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. I know that Deanne talked to Nick earlier this morning. And uh, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Nick Greenwell and all the physical therapists, they really care. They really care. How do I know that? Because I've been there many, many times. They work on me, and I watch and observe what they do and how they treat others. They are so caring and knowledgeable. I urge you to let them help you get back to being you. Call for an appointment, 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Woo! All of that. Now we've got the uh, advertisements out of the way, and we look at the phone line, and now walking in, putting his feet up on the desk, sitting back, and getting in a comfy position, Dave Bego, Indianapolis, Indiana. Sounds good, Zeb. I'm glad you're enlightened. (laughs) What are you doing, sitting on a stool? Uh, no, I'm in my office. You know, I would, I would imagine that your office is of the palatial kind, where you've got these rich carpets that you could probably lose yourself in, and great big windows overlooking the city of Indianapolis. Isn't that kind of the decor? Well, it kind of is. It doesn't overlook the city of Indianapolis, though. Um, it's because um, we're. 
Yeah, we're we're we're, we're a ways from downtown, but we're we're out in the country, and it's a, it's a beautiful view. Oh, great. Okay, Dave, we're going to get right down to the nitty-gritty. As a businessman, as a man that knows politics and various politicians, as a man that has uh, worked hard all of his life to garner a great living for you and your family, you've got to sit back and say what a frivolous, absolutely frivolously stupid waste of time and energy and money with the Democrats on this impeachment. Please, you got to have some thoughts on this yeah i agree with you 100 percent. you know i watched some of it last night and uh it was just boring as heck and uh, the stuff they were saying was just crazy but uh you know the american people need to wake up and understand that uh this is all about um them winning the election um and they want to get trump out of the way because they think they'll lose to him and uh so they're attacking him and uh again this goes back to the uh same type of uh, things I went through with the SEIU, you know, uh, same type of agenda and attacks and and uh, programs and everything um, to try and, you know, bring me down and uh, so they could force unionize my people. And uh, the um, uh, Democrats are trying to bring Trump down so they can uh, turn us into a socialistic, communistic country. So that's so what this is all about. You know, you said it was boring. Uh, there's other words I wanted to use, but the FCC restricts those. Uh, I watched as much as I could. I took as many notes as I could. But the gist of what happened on day one, and they were in session until 2 a.m. this morning, Eastern Time. Then they're going to get up and do the same balderdash again today. Really, tell me, David, have you ever in your life seen charges leveled at someone like President Trump and basically, hey, we think you did this. Now you've got to prove yourself innocent. It's taking away the jurisprudence and the complete rule of law in our country. You are innocent until proven guilty, but not according to the Democrats. Well, that's right, and this is what they do, Zeb. And, uh, you know, I keep telling the American people and uh, people on your program, this is I've been through this. I know exactly what it's all about. You know, they accuse me of all kinds of stuff, too, and... Uh, you know, they, they tried to get us taken down and me taken down and all that kind of stuff um, because they go out there and they're hypocritical. They throw stuff out that is not true and makes no sense. And uh, um, But you have to stand up and expose them and their lies, and uh, hopefully that's what's going to happen over the next day or two here. I have said this in the past, and I want to see if you agree with me. The ridiculous and very asinine allegations that are being made by the Democrats, and they're allowed to get away with this, I still maintain it's something to really be worried about, these asinine allegations, because I maintain that at least 5% of the public, 5% of the public, is going to believe those allegations because they don't take the time to discern what the news really is. Yeah, you're you're right, Deb, and uh, you know that's uh, and um, there there's an interesting article in um, the Arizona Freedom Alliance this morning talking about uh, called We the People and uh, talking about what's going on and that uh, and and they're saying the same thing that I did. Uh, they are trying to turn this country into uh, they call them the socialistic Democrats uh, have come of age and are beginning to come forward and try and bring this country down to take us into a socialist communistic thing and um, at the end of it and i think that people need to understand this it was uh, benjamin franklin walking out of independence hall in philadelphia after a constitutional convention adjourned in 1787 who said in response to a question shouted him dr franklin what have we got a republic or a monarchy to which benjamin franklin responded a republic a republic if we can keep it yep Amen. Amen. I want to uh, just kind of paint this picture a little bit with you, David, because it's, it struck me this morning at 4 a.m. when I was listening to the press conference of President Trump over in Switzerland before he left to fly back home. Uh, here's our president standing there with the world leaders. 
and the world leaders are in awe, many of which said so, of how Donald Trump has handled our economy, made our economy grow, which in turn has helped their economy and their economies grow. And and here is this president of the United States where all the world leaders are sitting there uh, smiling at him like Cheshire cats. And he gets on the plane and he's coming home to a country where the Democrats want to throw him out of office and impeach him. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. And uh, again, this, and I've said this before, this has been happening over the last, you know, since, actually since the end of World War II and that. Um, we have people that want to bring this country down. And, uh, um, you know, a lot of it's being infiltrated um, from the people we've beaten the wars in the Soviet Union and other countries and that that want to bring this country down. They know they can't do it militarily, so they want to do it from within. And they've, you know, come in and they've, uh, with the unions and mafia, uh, they've taken control of the Democratic Party, and this is what they're trying to do now, is bring it down, win the 2020 election of the presidency and the Senate, and keep the House, and completely change this country. Yeah. And uh, w- they need to wake up. And uh, But, you know, these other countries, it's really great that uh, they see how, how, how much Trump's done. And uh, I saw an interesting uh, little ad here, uh, but, uh, well, it, actually, my uh, high school basketball coach sent it to me, and it's, uh, it's a picture, and it says, I just heard Iran is looking for a new general. <laughs> Trump's even creating jobs in Iran. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I want to shift gears a little bit, and I want to go into a sports story. And I think I know what side of the fence you're on when I start talking about this story, but I want you to give me your evaluation. I watched the LSU-Clemson National Championship football game, and I thought it was an outstanding football game. Then afterward... We saw through Sports Center and other news outlets Odell Beckham Jr., a professional football player with the Cleveland Browns, on the sidelines of the LSU Tigers, reaching into his pocket and pulling out a huge wad of $100 bills and going around to some of the LSU players and handing three, dollars $400 at a time. This was caught on tape, and I said earlier this morning, Dave, I would love to see the NCAA. This time, turn the tables on Odell Beckham Jr. and sue him for what he did on the sidelines, which is illegal. And I'll tell you why. If the money being doled out by Beckham was real, which it was, and they proved it, it's a violation of NCAA bylaws. Cash is an example of impermissible benefits that are prohibited by governing bodies. That's straight from the NCAA book. What are your thoughts? Well, I agree with you 100%. It would be interesting to see what the NCAA does, though, because, uh, you know, they, uh, they're they giving in to a lot of uh, things in a lot of different areas, and uh, uh, the leaders don't seem to have the backbone. And uh, um, I, I, Personally, I, I think they'll just let it go away. Yeah, but don't you think there should be some kind of a challenge to Beckham, a pro player that's standing on the sidelines doling out this cash? The image... The absolute destroying of college athletics and the image of cash and the under-the-table uh, graft and gratuities, I don't like it at all, and I think there needs to be something done. Well, I do too, Zeb, but I just don't think they have the backbone to do it. And, uh, you know, it's um, it's uh, it's sad what's going on in, um, in, in college sports, but it's also, and I've said this on your show before, it's sad what's going on in education across the country from, you know, uh, grade school up through uh, college. And, uh, you know, I got another uh, uh, picture quote uh, sent to me uh, by another person um, and um, that was uh, made by Thomas Sowell. And he says, ours may become the first civilization destroyed, not by the power of our enemies, by by the ignorance of our teachers and the dangerous nonsense they are teaching our children in the age of artificial intelligence. They are creating artificial stupidity. And, uh, you know, we, we've got so much going on that uh, it's time, and, and, I, and I'm really hoping the, Dem- or the Republicans continue to stand up and uh, have a backbone and bring down this impeachment and uh, 
turn this country back to where it needs to be. Well, okay, right there. Right there, I want to ask you this. Now, today being day number two, uh, they're going to finish covering the articles of impeachment as they were. Dave, the facts are the facts. The House of Representatives does not do or cannot do or say anything to influence the Senate. In other words, once they finish their articles of impeachment over in the House, they took the articles to the Senate, and from that point, it's kind of like, go sit in the corner and shut up, because it's the Senate's ball game right now, and they are not to be influenced by the House of Representatives, Pelosi, Pelosi, Schumer, anybody else, because the Senate is now in complete control which is also in complete control of the GOP. I do not want to see an extended uh, time wasted on this so-called trial. I think after today, when all the articles have been looked at and listened to, I think that McConnell should stand up and call it for a vote, and you know the vote's going to be in favor of President Trump, and tell the Democrats to put their tail between their legs and go home. Amen. I hope. And I feel the same way. I hope you're right, and I hope it happens. But it won't, and you know it. Dead air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another story that I wanted to ask you about, and uh, it, it go, falls along with what we've talked about, right and wrong and black and white issues in this country. You mentioned education. And, Dave, we've got to, like you said just very uh, eloquently a few moments ago, we've got to get right and wrong and a purpose of what is black, what's white, and start putting some moral compass back in our school children, through our schools and our parents. Anything goes today. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to fight on this program until they pull the plug that uh, what's right is right, wrong is wrong, and there's no wishy-washy in between them or reversing of the roles. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but, um, you know... And there's another article I read this week that, and, and I've known this, is that um, the um, um, far left, you know, teachers who, and you know, you even grade school up to uh, uh, college level, uh, most of them have been unionized, and uh, they are the ones out there that are um, out there teaching the socialistic, uh, communistic principles to our kids, and. Um, we have to get this stopped because, you know, we're America, we're a company of freedom and uh, free markets and capitalism, and that's what makes us the best country in the world. And Trump has done a good job of pushing uh, who we are, and that's why we're we're making progress. And you know, uh, you know, it's uh, hard to find people because unemployment is so low, and uh, uh, our businesses are doing good, and these trade things are helping. It's uh, and that's what capitalism and free markets are all about, giving people the opportunity to move up in their lives. Okay, we're about nine months away from the November election. What's going to happen, in your opinion, with the SEIU and other unions? Are you looking for uh, storm clouds on the horizon as to how insidious and evil they will be leading up to November? Absolutely. Um, it's um, you know it's uh, it's going to get worse because uh, the unions are desperate. They continue to lose membership, and of course, when they lose membership, they they lose dues, and they want the dues money for their own pocketbooks and for their political agenda, which is to change radically change this country. And uh, we're going to see it pushing hard out there, and they're going to and not only are they going to be after the politicians, they're after companies in that too, and. Um, it's, it's, it's sad where this thing's going. Do you think, and I've listened to so many uh, different people that are on radio and television and write columns for newspapers, do you think, or do you even give it a smidgen of a chance that the Democrats, because they absolutely have nothing but buffoons standing behind their podiums telling the American public, vote for me, vote for me, none of them are qualified to be a city dog catcher, do you think that within the next 45 days after the Iowa caucuses, that all of a sudden the Democrats are going to look at their whole card and say, we've got nothing but a bunch of clowns that are running for the nomination, and all of a sudden somebody else jumps in, and I've got some names that I think might occur. But what are your thoughts? Well, 
I think there's some that uh, could, and uh, you know, but I, I, I don't think that the um, the Democrats that are still, you know, understand what we need to do with this country and keep it a capitalistic, free market society um, have the power or or the backbone to stand up to these uh, uh, far left people uh, in deep state uh, who are putting the money out there and, and the uh, people out there to achieve their agenda, and that's to bring somebody in that beats Trump that uh, is going to change this country forever. And, um, you know, the unions are going after everybody. I, just, I got a, uh, another um, article today that the SEIU is going after Sher- Sherwin-Williams because um, uh, they have gone to uh, replace their unionized managers with non-union workers. And, uh you know, they're 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 just going after Sherman Williams to try and bring him down, and this is the same type of thing that we're seeing with the presidency. Oh my goodness! One thing, it's another. Uh, of course, my team did not make it to the Super Bowl. They looked terrible, and quite frankly, they were. Green Bay was soundly defeated by the 49ers. And I'll tell you what, I was very impressed also with the victory by the Kansas City Chiefs. That being said, now with a crystal ball in front of you and a Johnny Carson, uh, uh, the great Karnak, uh, helmet on, Prognosticate to me, dear sir, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Well, it's going to be interesting, but I kind of think Kansas City will uh, stick it out and make it happen. And, you know, I don't like either team. I've never cheered for either team. But I'm going to go the other way and say that I have never seen such a compilation of fast, big, strong athletes like what are on the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, that Mostert and some of those other guys, the only way I'd want to tackle them is with the Sherman tank. Mm-hmm. Well, I agree. They, they do have some fast and big people, but... Uh... And I didn't watch the end of the, their game against Green Bay. And Green Bay came back and, you know, scored some points. But um, um, I just think uh, Kansas City has a lot of um, toughness in them. So. Okay. Well, gee, we could always make a small gentleman's wager of, oh, let's try something new. How about a bottle of wine? <laughs> One bottle, you'd still owe me three cases. <laughs> Bye, Beagle. <laughs> Dave Beagle, Indianapolis, Indiana, dear friend. Thank you for your insight this morning. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, and I hope you're feeling better. I am. I am. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Take care. Always enjoy having him on my program, Dave Beagle. Thank you very, very much. Hey, by the way, I want to remind you about Joel Heward, his family, and staff that are serving you and your families at Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. You know, they have so much of a flexible day, flexible hours. They're always there to serve you in a time of need and provide the families they serve with the best possible support and comfort. And always always upholding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please remember them in a time of need. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street and Rupert. Like I said, Joel Heward, his family and his staff serving you. And Joel Heward also, also serving you at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to get outside, and you should get outside, you shouldn't be cooped up all the time, you shouldn't be chained to your desk or chained to your job, and you got to get outside this weekend and just hit the hills. Man, on a snowmobile or a snow bike, I'm telling you, and I know the place where you should go. Mm-hmm. Let's ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. I don't know how they got all that equipment in that showroom, but it's astounding. And they've got just what you're looking for, along with all the accessories. And they've also got a great service department to keep you running. I urge you to stop in and see them. Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. It's true. This This is where the fun is sold. Mm -hmm. 
And if you're over in that neck of the woods or that portion of the desert, I also urge you to give a call first and foremost to our friends that can help you with all your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, and employee benefits. Who am I talking about? That's Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Oh, my goodness. They are so dedicated and so accessible and devoted to serving you. That's right. Give them a call. 436-4424. Nobody better. Mm-mm. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. You give them a call today. One of my absolute favorite guests, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, because every time I have him on, you can learn something, you can learn what really is truthful, and uh, I just want to introduce him right now, and that's Gregory Wrightstone. Sir, how are you? No, you're too kind. You're too kind. Not at all. His book is a book that every single American should read. It's called Inconvenient Facts, the science that Al Gore doesn't want you to know. And it lays out emphatic truth about what's going on with supposed climate change and global warming. Everybody should familiarize themselves with his book. Well, Right up front, how can they get a copy of your book? I want you to say that first and foremost. Yeah, you can go to, uh, most people buy it on Amazon, it's just easier. Uh, you just go search for, for inconvenient facts on Amazon. You can, uh, But I would encourage people to go to my website, there's so much good information there, and that's inconvenientfacts.xyz. And, uh, well, Zeb, you'll be interested to know, I just signed a contract this week, and we're going to get the book published in Norwegian. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm looking, hopefully, we'll get it done in Swedish, too, but... Uh, so Greta Thunberg could read it, and who really needs to learn a few things about climate change. Okay, but you led me right into this. I mean, I'm telling you, man, it's almost like you saw my notes. You, I, you're kind of scaring me this morning. Did you did you hear or see the presidential news conference this morning at 4 a.m., which was noon over in Davos, Switzerland? Did you see or hear that? I might have heard parts of it. Did you hear the question that was asked by one reporter in the background if the president, our President Trump, would adhere to the climate change remarks made by Greta Thunberg? The the reporter was asking if the president was going to change his opinions on climate change because of what Greta had said. Oh, that's just so ridiculous, Seth. That's... I mean, here we're we're having our policies driven by a seventeen and now seventeen year old uh, autistic girl and nun. I mean, she's this. It's ridiculous. It's we we've talked about her before, and it's it's not so much about that what she she knows so much about climate. It's just that so much of what she thinks she knows is wrong, and she needs to go back to school to learn the rest. And again, we need to get this book published in Swedish so so she can read it. Um, we're getting close when we're getting to Norway, but it isn't Swedish. So yeah, that's that's ridiculous. If President Trump is he knows what drives an e- economy. He knows a thriving economy is driven by uh, reliable, affordable, abundant energy, and none no three of those words. Are, are associated with renewables, not one. Uh, nuclear works pretty well. It's pretty expensive, but it's it's abundant and reliable. Uh, but wind and solar is neither abundant, it's not reliable, and it's expensive. And that's that's what they're learning, and that's why China is going great guns, uh, building more coal mines, more lignite mines. They're creating uh, new electricity power generation using coal. Uh, every month opening new new power stations and and it's 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 incredible and we're being asked to stifle our economy president trump what did that person that asked that question they want america uh to be restrained they want our economy to be slowed down they don't want us to be the powerful most most uh, economically powerful and powerful nation on the earth which we are and we're getting better and it's because of of our our commitment to freeing up our energy, to producing more natural gas, more oil, not reliant on, on the oil from the Middle East anymore, and we're doing it through American uh, innovation, technology, and fracking, and, and we're providing 
low cost energy. I had a I had dinner earlier this week with a with an executive from uh, from an oil company, and he's and he was said there's been a huge amount of capital destroyed uh, in the natural gas industry. By that I mean there were lots of investment companies pumped lots of money into these nat- new natural gas companies, uh, and the value has just plummeted, and it's plummeted because. Natural gas is so abundant; it's driven the value of natural gas down, and the natural gas now is probably at least a fifth, or probably I would argue even more than what it would have been if we didn't have this this natural gas fracking and horizontal uh, revolution that's that's fueling this. And he said to me, he said it really hasn't been destroyed; it's been transferred to the people. Um, people, landowners, got huge payments. Uh, America has benefited uh, to the tune of, of trillions of dollars, probably, because of the reduction in energy costs from this. So it's not that the these investment, many, many billions of dollars of investment have gone up in smoke, but rather America and the American people have benefited uh, because of, of this and the change. And that's what, that's what both India and China, uh, they, they realize it. Uh, as does Donald Trump in terms of what do they realize abundant, reliable, affordable energy is what drives economies absolutely Greg, you got to help me a little bit try to get this next part of what I want to talk about crammed into my mind I can't even understand the magnitude of this problem but do people whether they're Americans or the Canadians, or whether they're Spaniards, or whether they're Germans, whatever. Do the people really understand the magnitude of the problem of trying to convert to a renewable energy system and disavow and destroy one that has been very, very efficient, excuse me, with uh, energy at the flip of a switch, and go to green energy, the solar and the wind. Do they understand about agriculture and how are they going to convert a John Deere tractor to go down a field? Do they understand about the big trucks trying to get the food and the produce to the market? Do they understand about the American consumer uh, trying to get a vehicle that they can go and get these goods? I mean, the conversion is just blowing my mind. Yeah, no, it's not thought through. These people have not. Uh, but I tell you what, the, 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 the regular Joe and Jane on the street, I think they understand. They, they're, there's a lot of people out there doubting uh, what they're being told about this. And the people around the world, I think, are waking up as well. We see it. I've, I've really been talking to a lot of people in Australia recently, and they're they, there is a growing uh, resentment and backlash in Australia and Germany and other places, too. But uh, recently it's been Australia with these people. They're just fed up with this so-called green revolution. They're, they're fed up with, with being forced to uh, rely on unreliable energy from wind and solar. And they're, they've experienced brownouts and blackouts in Australia. Uh, they don't want it. They're now experiencing the fires uh, through misguided green energy policies. It's not climate change driving those fires, Seb. It's, it's misguided climate policies and, and green environmental policies that thought that uh, we'll, we'll just let the bush and the forest and the natural national parks just, uh, we'll let nature run its course. And what we've seen by nat- letting nature run its course, that the fuel load in Australia has just built up, and, and now it's a, it's a firebomb. They've got these uh, eucalyptus trees with very, very oily leaves. The koalas love them because they're oily. Well, when they get on fire, these things go up like torches. Yep. Uh, and we've imported eucalyptus into California now. We're seeing some of the same uh, flammable issues with them there in California. Uh, so, so the Australia fires, is a, it's a fascinating uh, subject there. I don't know if we had talked about that over the last few weeks, but it, it's... It's really a fascinating uh, plunge into that if we have time to talk about we, it. We do, and it's interesting. Again, I swear that you were in my studio this morning uh, watching me write my notes. We have a caller, and I'm going to take that call just momentarily, but I want to tell you, Greg, uh, if you've ever seen this new newspaper that's out for subscription called the Epic Times, I'm you need... Pardon me? 
I'm a subscriber. Well, then, are you are aware of that letter from the executive director of a, an Australian group that really said about the green folly that uh, absolutely perpetrated the fires in Australia? Did you read that letter? Well, I tell you what. There's so much written. I did not. I don't recall that one in particular, but I've read a lot. Well, read a lot. get a copy of it, and I'll talk about it in just a minute. But right now, we'll take that call. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Quickly. Yeah, I've got the Epic Times too. But uh, what I want to know is why don't these tree huggers ever say anything about the pollution coming out of India and China, and, and they're just destroying the oceans. All right, we'll have Greg respond. Greg, if you would, to the caller, please. Well, there are two things with India and China. One is, as he's referencing, I think he's talking about actual pollution, yeah. plastics, trash, yeah. garbage. Uh, you're right, it's the Southeast Asia that's polluting the oceans with this stuff. Uh, the other thing that the environmentalists and the eco-Nazis or eco-fascists will tell you, uh, they, they think that carbon dioxide uh, is pollution, and it's not. Uh, India and China, though, are, are increasing their carbon dioxide emissions tremendously, especially China. Uh, and it was just, that was last month, a new EPA administrator stated that the United States have reduced its e e CO2 emissions by 14% in the last 10 years. And he stated that in just the 45 days before he had spoken, China's increase in CO2 had completely wiped out all the reductions in CO2 that the United States had, had done over the last 10 years. So what we're, being do, what we're being told that we need to restrict America's economy, we need to impose uh, uh, limits on our freedoms, they're going to tell us what cars to drive, how to eat our homes, uh, how, how you're going to go to and from Home Depot with your, with your sheetrock. They, they want that for America to know it's not going to make any difference. It's not going to make any difference. And that's what they want. They want they want to restrict us and, and knock down capitalism. Absolutely, knock down free trade and knock down uh, our ability and our freedoms here in the United States. And I'm, I'm I know you and I are not aren't going to stand for it. And but we need to get this this information out there. And so thank you for having this forum for us to talk about this. Absolutely. Let me read, and I, I beg you to read that letter in the Epic Times from the, I believe it's the person's name is Viv Forbes, executive... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Viv, Viv, I just, he just wrote a commentary. It is a mail, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'm in contact with Viv almost every day. Viv uh, wrote a commentary for me that I posted on my website. It's called Fighting Fires with Fire. Yes. Well, his last part of his letter, I think, sums up the idiocy that's being imposed on all of us around the world. I'll read it, and I want you to respond. He said, quote, It was critical, uh, pardon me, it was criminal green folly that babbled on about the climate emergency while they sponsored forest conditions that caused agonizing deaths for so many innocents. Residents, firefighters, livestock, koalas, and other native animals, birds, and insects. Australia cannot afford any more green follies. Politicians must stop sacrificing Australians on the green altar. That sums it up. Yep, yeah. And it's fascinating. Uh, his post he did uh, that I've got up there talks about the history of fire. And it's fascinating. When the Aborigines first arrived in Australia, they brought fire with them and completely transformed the continent from a forested, possibly rainforest continent and used fire to completely change the, both the climate and the, and the, uh, the plant life and the e ecology of the continent by, by wiping it out. They used fire early, often, and regularly. And when the first explorers came, uh, Captain Abel Tasman, Tasmania is named after him, when he first landed, if you're reading his journal, in his log books, they note that everywhere they landed around Australia, uh, they recognized either recent fire or ongoing fires, and there was always smoke on the horizon. Hmm. So fire is part of, of the Australian landscape, as is, excuse me, as is drought. Uh, in fact, the, the national poet uh, for Australia's name is Dorothea McKellar, and while she was in London pining away for her home country, her famous poem that, that she wrote in 1908, there was a, 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 
and the recurring stands of the set of mountain ranges of droughts and flooding rains. Uh, so she wrote about this back in 1908, about these recurring flo- alternating floods and then droughts. So Australia's drought and, and the alternative has been long, and fires have long been played a part uh, of Australia's history. And Russell Crowe and Nicole Kidman, uh, apparently both of Australia, apparently had less schooling than Greta Thunberg because they, or at least they missed their history classes of Australia where they would learn that that Australia uh, year in and year out undergoes a fire season. Absolutely. Worse than usual. Absolutely. But it was accentuated and exacerbated by failed forest management practices. You know, there's another quick uh, story that I wanted you to refer to. In our illustrious, and I kind of put that in context, rag that's printed here in this area called the Times News newspaper, every day they carry somewhat of a green energy type story, and they came out with another story that was headlined, Study! Ocean temperatures highest on record. And one of their people that were interviewed, a guy by the name of Chang Ling, said this measured ocean warming is irrefutable and is further proof of global warming. I mean, there's always a scare story, a chicken little story every day. Yeah, yeah. Well, the oceans are warming a bit. And again, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. We've seen that. The warming oceans in the past have always correlated with, with huge benefits to both the Earth's ecosystems and, and humanity. And the warming oceans mean that... So I, I don't dispute that we are... that the oceans are warming. Um, but it's not leading to catastrophe by any measure. And, and it's... Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're benefiting uh, from this. And, of course, uh, as I'm sitting here this morning, I'm working on my next book, and and that'll be an exploration of of the many benefits of that we see from a modest warming of of a degree or a degree and a half over the last 100 years, and increasing CO2. Just continuing. It seems like every week there's a new uh, scientific study that comes out that talks about the benefits of of increasing carbon dioxide on on the plant life around the world and, and humanity benefiting from that. Greg, share with me real quick. I've only got three minutes left in this segment, but real quick, uh, why and how, with supposedly the educated in our society, why is CO2 getting such a slap in the face and such a, I think, totally uh, uh, bad name when it's such a beneficial attitude towards human beings? Well, because it's directly related to capitalism and uh, benefits and, and uh, increase. It, they need to knock. Uh, CO two is the perfect villain in this uh, because we can knock back CO two, and, and it'll it'll restrict uh, capitalism. It'll restrict freedoms, and that's what they're they're trying to do. Uh, it's it's been a brilliant ploy that's worked out pretty well for them. Uh, we just need to get the the information out there to tell people that they're. They're being lied to. Not not that they're being lied to that climate change isn't happening. It is. Uh, but that the, all these horrific consequences that they talk about, they're just not happening. Yeah. They ain't. They're not happening. And, and we, we again, you hear me say it all the time, but I see an earth that's thriving, prospering, and greening. And that's really, really good for mankind and humankind. I, I, it's, it's a huge, huge great story and we should be we should be all be thankful for for what we're experiencing today absolutely every metric that you look at the earth and humanity are benefiting well i have you on this program for the sole purpose of trying to calm the natives down and speak the truth and god bless you man and i'll tell you the audience again the book is called inconvenient facts the science that al gore doesn't want you to know written by a man that's been on my program numerous times gregory wrightstone and what's the new book going to be about some of the same or how are you going to transition to another area more more it's more of an exploration of a thriving earth and humanity and also an exploration too of looking back i i I think it's fascinating the relationship through of human history over the last several thousand years and its strong relationship between uh, temperature and it's 
It's just the opposite of what we're being told. You heard me say that before, but we're being told that, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, we can't warm up another degree or two degrees or we're all going to die and there'll be famine, when just the opposite, history tells us, just the opposite occur. It's Absolutely. It's horrific. Absolutely. Famine, mass depopulation, and, and just horrible consequences for both Earth's ecosystems and humanity. Uh, again, you know, I say it a lot. Just opposite of what we're being told. Absolutely. Quickly, how's the eye doing? Uh, uh, it's improving. I, <laughs> I've, been, I've been knocked back for the last several weeks with a torn retina and bleeding, and but it's it's getting better. Yeah, it's not something I'd wish on anybody. So I'll keep an eye out for your for an email. <laughs> that's, that's a pun, by the way. <laughs> You're always welcome on this program. Thank you so much, Gregory Wrightstone, great author and speaker of the truth when it comes to really what's happening with supposed climate change. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being on the program. Thank you. All right, sir. Uh, that book is excellent, and uh, I don't think I've ever read a book that lays all these issues with purported climate change, global warming, whatever, and really uh, lays it out so it's so pl simplistic to read and understand. He does a great job. Gregory Wrightstone, thank you very much. I think I better do the weather, but before I do the weather, no, I'm going to go right into it, as a matter of fact. I want to remind you the weather is brought to you this hour by Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. These are such nice people and so professional in providing accounting services to you. That's right, for the entire Minicash area for well over 50 years. I mean, they really know their stuff. And they are the pros when it comes to tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, retirement planning, etc. You know, for those of you that might be starting a business or maybe changing over to a corporation or maybe you want to hire more employees, please get a hold of them today. They can and they will help you. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Right now, here's Gina. Fairly nice day for today, and we're on a warming trend for the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Partly sunny skies. We are expecting a high of 38. Winds out of the west at about 8 miles an hour for tonight. Some clouds going to be rolling in. Steady temperature right around 33. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies. High of 42 with an overnight low of 31. For Friday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers mostly in the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies. Highs about 40. And then for Saturday, partly sunny, 43. It's like mid-40s for Sunday, Monday. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zephyr. You know, I looked at the forecast, uh, Gina, and man, oh man, it's not too shabby for the next eight, nine days. It looks like we're consistently going to be in the 40-degree range, and oh boy, that sounds good to my old broken bones, I'll tell you that. Weather forecast this hour brought to you by our friends, Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company, providing accounting services to the Minicash area with offices in Burley and Rupert, the professionals, Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. I want to remind you that tomorrow, tomorrow at 1130, we're going to be at Denny's Restaurant. Yeah, betcha, 611 North Overland in Burley for our monthly lunch bunch. I urge you to come. Join us. Be part of the fun. And you might be one of the lucky winners of our gift certificates that are provided by Walmart, Smith Foods, Hanson Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin, and Denny's. Yes, we appreciate it. Yes, we want you there. And the food is fantastic at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. Don't forget that. Okay, what else have we got cooking for this hour? Oh, I need to tell you about 7K medals. You better believe it. I told you that about, oh, it's been close now to two months ago. Uh, our dear friends Lon Hardy and Sharon Wilmot introduced Deanne and I to a great way to help build your own financial security and future, kind of create your own bank through silver purchases. And the more I'm around it, the more I'm with it, the more I enjoy this and really see a saving opportunity for you, me, and it's a valued treasure for your loved ones in the future. I urge you to call Lon Hardy at 312-8699 or Sharon Wilmot at 430-3259 and tell him I told you to call, please, and find out more about 7K medals and silver purchases that really, they're going to come right to your door. That's right, the silver purchases come right to your door and you're building your financial security. Check it out today, 7K medals. 
All right, let's get a rundown here. Oh, and I've got a little note here. I've got to get on the air public service announcement here in my not-too-cluttered desk. That's a lie. I can't hardly find anything on this thing. Uh, The 6th Annual Soil Health Workshop for 2020 is going to take place on Thursday, February 6th, and it's going to be at the Best Western Burley Inn and Convention Center in Burley. And uh, for this Soil Health Workshop, it's going to start at 7.45 in the morning with registration on the 6th. Uh, they really need you to RSVP, and that means call them back, say you're coming, and the number, there's two numbers, write these down, 208-572-3369, or or 208-436-4202. They're going to have absolutely a jam-packed day of very informative speakers and different events at the Soil Health Workshop for 2020. Uh, Let's see what else have I got here. I think I've covered everything. Next hour, we're going to be talking to a lady that has written a book called Dear Donald... Letters from a Loving Deplorable. Her name is Sandra Lee, and I'm looking forward to having her on the program to talk about that book. And then at 10.30, we've got a person on the program that's the Vice President of Policy for Tech Freedom. Ian Adams is going to be on the program. Probably scare us a little bit about how we really have lost our privacy and he's going to be talking about that at 10.30 this morning. Right now, uh, I'm going to tell everybody to tune in to the CBS News. Oh, quick reminder. I almost forgot this. Thank you. Next Monday, don't forget Idaho Legislative Update, sponsored by Handy Truck Lines. It's at 10.30, and we'll have right from the legislative session either Speaker of the House Scott Bedke, Representative Fred Wood, or Senator Kelly Anthon. All of this brought to you by Handy Truck Lines, serving businesses all over the Northwest. That's at 1030 next Monday. Right now, let's go to the CBS News. I'll be back in seven. And a good morning once again. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, Your Magic Valley. Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations with all the tires you need for your safe driving. Stop in and see them today. Along with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. And also our friends at Greystone Crossing Senior Living. Wow. That's good word to sum it up wow if you haven't seen this beautiful brand new facility seniors i urge you to call make an appointment so you could stop by and see if that's not just the place for you it's a beautiful 12 bedroom home and they provide uh, three meals a day snacks housekeeping and local transportation wow you better check it out today the number to call 650-4979 650-4979 graystone crossing senior living nice nice place 1221 21st street in hayburn seniors living the good life with friends right now let's go to the phone line and my next guest ready to come on is the author of the book called dear donald letters from a loving deplorable Hmm, this ought to be interesting good morning sandra lee how are you Oh, good morning, Zeb Bell. You can't even imagine how thrilled I am to hear from you. Well, I appreciate that. Time zones mixed up today, and I'm, I have you on my schedule for noon, but I did not take into consideration that I'm in Ohio and you're in Idaho. Yes. And so we, I almost missed the interview, so thank heavens I can talk to you. I love your show. I've listened to about five or six of them. And they are so well done. Good for you. Well, thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Now, your book, when I saw the information sheets come across my desk, I thought, I've got to have this lady on my program. The title, Dear Donald, Letters from a Loving Deplorable. Give us a breakdown on the book. Tell us about how it's written and why. Well, I took the uh, Hillary Clinton's phrase, um, deplorable, and I took it to heart, but I tried to stay kind of um, lighthearted about it. I didn't take it seriously. You know, she's 
pretty nasty towards those people who want to support Trump. And deplorable actually means deserving strong condemnation. I found that out from another uh, show host who said, you know what deplorable means? I thought it just meant, you know, this, that, and the other. He said it means deserving strong condemnation. And I thought about that, and I went, I do not deserve strong condemnation. I deserve praise for the fact that I have interviewed zillions of people. I have read, I am not kidding you, 200 books on this subject. I know Donald Trump inside out. I'm kind of enchanted with the whole Donald Trump movement, and I've never been a political person. I walked into a campaign office. My dad's an automobile dealer. And I drove up the street in my pretty red Lincoln and walked into this kind of shabby office that was a campaign office for Donald Trump. I had lived in New York for a long time. I saw what that man did in New York City. He cleaned it up with Giuliani. It isn't today what it was when he and Giuliani were busy cleaning up that city. And I know what he can do when he rolls up his sleeves and wants to get something done. I also know he's not a saint, but guess what? Neither am I and neither are you. I know that uh, Christ had apostles who had some pretty colorful histories, and they did some pretty wonderful things. So I forgive his sins as I forgive my own, and I am enjoying the man that he is today. I'm thrilled with his accomplishments. I think he's done a remarkable job. And when I was in that office, for the first time in my life, being politically active, who knows why, I was just drawn to this quest. Making hundreds of phone calls, everybody would whisper on the phone, please don't, don't tell anybody what I said. And people were for him, but afraid to be for him. I think because Obama, God bless him, was such a tall, dark, handsome black man, you know, and the whole black population was so thrilled to see a black president, why wouldn't they be? And then on the scene comes down the escalator this tall, dark and handsome, very white man with very white skin and very blonde hair. And Oh, my gosh. I think everybody was afraid that if they said they liked his policies, it would sound like they were being racial, which they weren't. So, And believe me, a lot of people have kind of confused that, and that's not the issue at all. We're not racial at all. We just like the man's question. Let me ask you this, Sandra. Right now, what he's accomplished. Boy, I'm just rambling, aren't I? I get so excited about Donald Trump that I I can't shut up sometimes. (laughs) Let me ask you this, and I respect your, uh, your wanting to go on and carry on about a man that's done really a great job for the United States. But let me ask you... Why do you think there is so much hatred and so much animosity against Donald Trump, the person? Not necessarily the president, but also the person. Why do you think people hate him so bad? Well, the people who hate him are the people who are losing power. And I'll tell you something. The more I see them accusing him of A, B, C, D, E, and F, the more I see that that's what they're guilty of. Everything they've accused him of, that's what they're guilty of. It's almost, it's almost frightening. They're calling him out on 10 different issues, and that's what they're guilty of. And this man is trying to, trying to rid the country of the swamp, not only on the Democratic side, on any side, on every side. The man knows the swamp exists. He's sick and tired of it. He's given up a lot to clean it up. This is his mission in life. He's called to do it. I really think he's called to do it. I'm not just saying that lightly. I really believe the man is called for this mission at this time in history. It's been prophesied by biblical prophetic. And and that's one way you could look at it. Um, He's very pro-Israel. His son, 
and, and daughter are all very pro-Israel. His daughter married a Jewish man. So it's not like he's all one thing or all the other thing. He's very pro-black. He's done so much for the blacks, for the Hispanics, for Israel, for women, for the whole working force. So I don't see this man as prejudiced in any way. Mm -hmm. But I think that the Democratic Party wanted to jump on that and use it against him. And I think that's why all those people were whispering on the phone, because they knew that was going to happen. Right. They knew that was going to happen, that everyone was going to assume that someone who would vote for Donald Trump would be anti-black. And that is so not the case. And thank God the black population is walking away from the Democratic Party. Amen. I love what Kanye West did. He went to the White House, and he um, praised Trump, and then they ripped him to shreds, and then he sort of went back to the Democrats, and then he walked away and said, you know what? Stop telling me that I can't love Donald Trump. I love the man. He's chosen by God for this mission, and I'm going to back him up. Conway's become a born-again Christian. He's brought millions of black people to his side of the issue, and I think that's just absolutely wonderful. I write about him in my book. I, You know, my book is sort of like Catcher in the Rye. It's very one minute I'm talking about my sister when we had lunch together, and the next minute I'm talking about the Senate, and the next minute I'm talking about my cleaning lady, and the next minute I'm talking about the president. I'm jumping all over the place, but it's very real. Let me ask you this. Real stream of conscious dialogue from a very real person. You know, in Cleveland, Ohio, I spent a long time in New York, so I'm familiar with that. I have a condo in Florida. I'm familiar with, I'm not very familiar with where you're from, but boy, did I learn a lot about Idaho from your shows. Well, thank you very much. It's so much fun listening to your show. Oh, well, Sandra, I appreciate that. Let me ask you this. When you were doing the research to compile the uh, facts and figures and uh, the stories for your book, and you talked to people out on the street, you talked to people at meetings, or you talked to people over lunch, w did you run across a lot of people that were absolutely bent on destroying the Trump administration and Trump personally? Or did most of the people that you visited with would agree with you that this man is doing a good job. Honestly, I'm being completely honest with you. Most of the people thought he was doing a good job. I did have a few friends who were very anti-Trump, but I am so gracious. You know, this is my gift. Donald Trump's style is a little bit gruff, and I don't mind it. I like it. It's macho. It's bold. It's brash. It's honest. It's energetic, it's charismatic. What's wrong with it? It's great. He's not that smooth-talking Barack Obama, but he's funny and he's hilarious sometimes. He's refreshing, he's real. It's fine. I'm, like, very gracious, very polite, very patient, a good listener. And so when I would run into people who were hostile and angry, sometimes sad, sometimes heartbroken after the election, I would be very careful, very caring, very nurturing, very patient with them, and I'd do everything I could to maintain their friendship, and, and uh, because I, I understand when people are disappointed. Sometimes they're confused, or they're just stuck in a particular position. I'm not going to make it better by yelling at them or, or yelling back at them, so I always try to be... Uh, the calm in a storm. Okay. That's my gift. That's my talent. That's, you know, that's not so much what Donald Trump does. He's a little more aggressive, um, a, a, a little bossy, you know. And that's fine. What he's doing is working for this time in history. Absolutely. Let me take a caller with a question for you, Sandra, and then we'll be back with more. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Quickly, please. Yeah, uh, tell me what you think about this. Uh, Brad Parcell <clears throat> dismissed immigration as a top issue for President Trump to run in on 2020 because he says immigration patriots are voters Trump already has. Now, that, that sounds like something Hillary said, and she lost. 
Uh, I th- well, uh, you want me to respond? Yeah, go ahead, please, Sandra, if you would. Thank you. My pleasure. You know, I've given a lot of thought to immigration. I'm a kind of a softy. I've got a very soft heart. You know, give me your tired, your poor. My father was an immigrant. I put a, a, a stone for him at Ellis Island. I cried over how wonderful it was for him to come to this country. He struggled to get in. And he did it legally, and it took him a long time to learn the language, and, and, you know, he became a legal citizen. It was a great thrill for him. We have people storming the border by the thousands. What is it right now? They have 3,000 Mexico turning them back to Guatemala. We cannot accommodate them. It's not that we don't want to open our doors. We do want to, but we want legal immigration. We want a process by which you come here the way you're supposed to come here. Every country in the world has border control. And Obama had border control. This whole thing about border control is anything to make Trump look bad. And I understand that the Democrats see an opportunity to let thousands and thousands of people into the country who perhaps they can win over to their side of the issue and have them vote for them. Mm-hmm. It's hard to stand up to people who are needy, who are hungry, who are begging, who are frightened. A lot of these people are opportunists. A lot of them, God, I wish we could help them. But we cannot let every single person in the That's world right. into this country. We can't do it. That's we right. We have to have an orderly system of immigration. That's right. And that's okay. You know, let me uh, ask you this, Sandra. You sound like a lady that's talked to a lot of people and put together a lot of ideas and concepts for this book. I'm going to throw this at you and see what your thoughts are. Number one, we have seen uh, 16, 17, 18, 22, whatever number of people that wanted to throw their hat in the ring to become the Democratic nominee to fight Donald Trump. Now it's down to six. I don't think any one of those six that were at the podiums the other night in the Democratic debate are even worthy of shining Donald Trump's shoes. Do you believe that maybe after the Iowa caucuses that someone else will throw their hat in the ring and that someone else might include Hillary? Do you think she may stage a comeback? No, I don't think she will. I'd be surprised if she did. I think she'd be crazy to do that. She doesn't have the health She doesn't have the energy, and she doesn't really have the support of the Democrats Party. I think Bloomberg has uh, billions of dollars and is going to try to throw money at a problem. And I'm not against Bloomberg. I think he's a good man. He did a good job in New York. He's very competent. He's very bright. But guess what? He is not, God bless him, he is not Donald Trump. He is just not. Donald Trump is the right man at the right time for this job. And his accomplishments are magnificent. They're nothing short of magnificent. They're just so amazing. He's confronting the opiate crisis. The prescription drug costs are down. He got rid of so many bad guys. ISIS is under control. My God, do you remember when they were showing the beheading of Americans on television? Yes. And that was a nightmare. ISIS was completely out of control. That man got it under control in a year. Let me... The American embassy into Jerusalem, that took a lot of guts. He took a stand on that. He's done a lot with prison reform. He, he, he has help wanted signs everywhere. I can't go shopping without seeing 15 help wanted signs. Nobody's out of work. Anybody who's willing to work can find a job. That's right. And I believe in the American way. My father started at the bottom. He worked 18 hours a day. He built himself up from a body shop to a used car dealer to a new car dealer to a Lincoln dealer. And the man died, a rich man, God bless him. And he, we went from a little house to a little bit better house to a little bit better house. You know, that's the American dream. And I'm now living in an absolutely gorgeous home. It took a couple of generations of hard work, but, you know, you can't just get 
get things overnight. You have to work hard for it. And I think the Democrats are trying to promise a lot of free stuff, and that's their way of seducing votes from immature people. And I think it's... Um, I think it's unethical. Let me jump in here and ask you one final question. And uh, I wish I had more time, but I've relegated by what the clock tells me. But in the Democratic Party and what they're doing in the pursuance of trying to get Donald Trump impeached with really no bona fide facts of any wrongdoing, I believe, and some of my other guests have said the same, that this could be the complete destruction and fragmentation of the Democratic Party if they pursued this much further. Do you agree? I totally agree. And I honestly feel that the um, Senate should move to dismiss this whole thing. I don't want to hear Hunter Biden. I don't want to hear anybody. They can deal with Hunter Biden in another way later. Stop this ridiculous impeachment trial. It's insane unfair. The country is sick of hearing it, and I've had enough of it. I'm telling you, I can't watch five minutes of it. And I watch everything, and I read everything. I turn it on, I try to watch it, I go, oh, this is sickening. It makes no sense to me. It's completely unfair, and it needs to be dismissed. Absolutely. Sandra, tell me quickly, I've only got about 30 seconds left. Where can people find the book called Dear Donald, Letters from a Loving Deplorable? Oh, bless your heart for asking. I appreciate that. Dear Donald, Letters from a Loving Deplorable can be gotten easily from Amazon. That's, that's your easiest route to get the book. And I hope you'll contact me. I'd love to talk to, to your listeners. You can email me at Sandra Lee at DearDonaldBooks.com, and, and um, feel free to contact me at any time. And I'm going to continue to enjoy the shows that you have on uh, your website. They're, they're so darling. Well, I they really are. I love all the ways that you talk. I get such a big kick out of it. Thank you. You're a... When you said, um, write it down in the dust on the back of your pickup truck. I thought, <laughs> oh, it's the cutest thing ever. God bless you, Sandra. I love it. Well, thank you. I hope that someday we get a chance to meet, and I want to tell you how much I appreciate your being on the program. Good luck with your wonderful book, Donald, uh, Dear Donald, Letters from a Loving Deplorable, written by Sandra Lee. Thank you so much, and I'll be in touch and have you back. I will. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Well, nice lady, Sandra Lee. Again, the book is called Dear Donna Letters from a Loving Deplorable, using the word that Hillary Clinton called all of us. And I thank her for being on the program this morning. Okay, let's gather up and catch up and see where we're at. Oh, we've got to tell you a little bit about our friends right over there in Burley, and that's, of course, Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. And they're having a great big January flooring event. I mean carpet at prices that you cannot believe. I mean luxury vinyl for your entire home at prices that you cannot believe. I urge you to go in there or give them a call and say, I want to beautify my home and I need help well they are there to serve you at Lee's Furniture Floors and more for their great big January flooring event they're located at 459 Overland and Burley and I tell you what just jump in the pickup or the car get over there right now and talk to the professionals Jeff and the rest of the crew at Lee's Furniture Floors and more Wow. Uh, I also want to take some time here to remind everybody that tomorrow we'll be over at Lunch Bunch. Zeb's Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland in Burley. And we really want you to attend. You know, we're looking for new people all the time to come down and join us. We're very patriotic. We make no bones about it. We start with the prayer, then the pledge, then the national anthem with the lovely voice of Linda. And uh, we're just looking forward to having you there. We 
enjoy our lunch. We give away a bunch of door prizes. Thanks to our friends at Walmart, Smith's Foods, Hanson Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin, Denny's, all of these folks and more. So be there tomorrow at 1130. And that's, of course, Zeb's Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. Uh, I think what we're going to do is send it back over to Wheels for a few minutes, and uh, he's got some interesting information, and then we're going to come back with our next guest, Ian Adams. So stay tuned. More coming up in a minute. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, my, 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 my. We're on the track for the last half hour of the program. And uh, before we get started with our next guest, I want to remind you about Patterson's Electronics at 421 East Main in Burley. You know, why run all over and check? Check out electronics here, there, and everywhere when you can go right to Patterson's and check out the best in home theater systems, video surveillance cameras, car stereos and speakers, complete sound systems, all the televisions from Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, LG TVs. And, you know, and they're getting in right now the new models of all the car audio systems. Wow, it's all there in one location to serve you. Patterson's Electronics, 421 East Main in Burley, and they're open Monday through Saturdays 9 to 6 and the number to call these nice people 6786997 Patterson's in Burley Let's go to the phone line right now, and I'm going to tell this person right up front that when it comes to high tech or anything technological, I am probably a low man on the totem pole as far as understanding, and I make no bones about it. We have with us the Vice President of Policy for Tech Freedom, Ian Adams. Sir, good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. And yourself? Well, I always say if I was any better, the wrong fat man be wearing my clothes. (laughs) Very good. Well, it sounds like it's a good one. Ian, uh, help me right from the get-go. Tell me a little bit about Tech Freedom. What is it? How do you work it? And what are you representing? Sure. Well, Tech Freedom is a public policy think tank, and our job is to think about technology issues from a free market perspective because it seems left, right, and center, whether it's in Washington, D.C., Sacramento, California, or any other state capital, Uh, folks are looking to make life a little harder when it comes to these new and emerging technologies that offer so much promise. When you say that, uh, even though I'm an old man and kind of set in my ways and I don't like technology, basically, uh, I'm seeing and feeling fears of trepidation about how little my privacy means to anybody or any group anymore. And it's kind of like you're there, they know you're there, they know what you do, they know what you want, and we've lost our individual freedoms. Am I correct in saying something like this? Well, I think that the government does a lot to leverage technologies in a way that isn't necessarily consistent with our constitutional guarantees of liberty. So I'll say that right off the bat, and I think that states like Utah have passed some laws doing a really good job to make sure that law enforcement doesn't trample on people's liberty when it comes to uh, data collection or undue warrants. Now, the question is, what about big companies? What about big technology companies? Well, we take the perspective that just as you enter into an agreement, a private agreement with another party to buy a piece of land or to go down and buy buy something at the, at the local hardware store, so too do you enter into private agreements with technology companies when you're on the internet. And so the challenge really is, do we want the government dictating the nature of the relationship that you have with another private party? And our answer tends to be no, because there are all kinds of effects that are incidental, unintended, and ultimately uh, problematic from a liberty perspective. You know, first of all, I want to correct you on one thing. I'm in Idaho, and I want to say a great tribute to my gym state of Idaho and uh, have you relate to that. That being said, with political climates and administrations that change, Ian, how afraid should the American public be about these transitions and different party philosophies on technology and what control they have over us? 
Well, I think that uh, the different parties certainly do have two very different perspectives. I think that you can listen to candidates as, as we come into election season here, and I think you'll find that a lot of the Democrats, well, uh, they want to put strict limits on the way that technology can interact with people and their and their livelihoods. Um, the president and the, and the Republicans at this point, well, they, they are in some cases, for instance, uh, Senator from Missouri, uh, looking to limit how people can express themselves online. So they have different focuses, but I think both are concerned about the proliferation of technology. Mm-hmm. Has this technology, and again, I'm uh, simplifying a lot of these questions because of my naivete on the issue, but has technology today just basically destroyed a lot of things in our society that were personal, a lot of things that shouldn't be conversed about, a lot of things that shouldn't be transmitted, and can we ever get it back or put a lid on it? Well, I don't think there's any putting a lid on it, but I, I would say this. We are at the very beginning of stages where these new technologies are being adopted. So, in other words, just as people had to fully embrace the automobile, just as people had to fully embrace all kinds of in-home appliances, and it transformed the way they interacted with their neighbors and they spent time because it freed up all kinds of time that people would have otherwise been spending on chores or on commuting, so too it is the case with the Internet and technologies that are related to it. So my point being, all kinds of convenience has come about as a result of these technologies. But as you say, we've lost something in that process. And it's learning how to live with these technologies in balance so that we keep our community strong, so we keep our our relationships with our neighbors, that um, I think it'll be more sustainable for us moving forward. But Society and culture can get get a little tripped up when these big technological changes occur. I agree with you. Ian, let me ask you this. Uh, on the information sheet that was sent to me by my dear friend Matt Martini back in uh, the D.C. area, mentioned the California Consumer Privacy Act. Can you tell me the shortcomings or pitfalls of that act? I'd like you to explain it because uh, it said also that similar legislation could be enacted in various states soon. Explain that, please. Sure enough. So the California Consumer Privacy Act is a piece of legislation that is, I mean, it's problematic because what it's going to do is it's going to make it much harder for firms that aren't the, the, the large tech companies uh, to do business in California. It's going to be far more expensive because there are going to be new notice requirements. There are going to be new uh, data access and response requirements that are just going to be hugely expensive for any but the largest firms. This destroys the competition, potentially, that we need in the online ecosystem so that we have a robust market. Here's the real problem, though. The way the law is written, it might actually affect and apply to businesses located in states like Idaho and elsewhere. And in doing so, lawmakers in California may be regulating Idaho's market, which, Mm. of course, is a violation of the Constitution's Commerce Clause protection. We look at it with a great deal of skepticism, not only when it comes to its substantive provisions, but also as a matter of constitutional law, because, frankly, none of your listeners voted for any legislator that had anything to do with the passage of this law. You know, I'm sitting here, we have a call, and I'm going to take that call momentarily, but I'm sitting here and I I have envisions over my mind of a huge tentacle or spider web of all these different uh, uh, companies and all these different ways of uh, procuring private information about me and my wants and my dislikes, etc. And it's almost uh, like the Twilight Zone, something that we'll never get away from, and individual privacy will never be seen or heard from again give me a short response to that and then we'll take a caller well i would say that uh you have a right to be concerned uh, because there is a whole different slew of collection mechanisms out there right now but i would say that individuals still have a great deal of control of 
how they put their personalities online, and that is significant. Very good. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Please hurry with your question, if you would. Yeah, uh, I was wondering, does your organization do anything to uh, try and get suppressed technology released? For example, the FBI stole all of Tesla's papers uh, the day he died, and nobody's seen them since. And cold fusion has been going for 20 years, and uh, that's been suppressed, too. Uh, let's. We'll have him answer that on the air. Ian, if you'd respond to the caller, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Sure thing. Uh, we do not work to suppress any technologies. In fact, we attempt to make sure the legal and regulatory environment exists so that new technologies can become available uh, when the market demands them. You know, Ian, when you say the words new technology, I, it, I sit here and I am just blown away with the human mind and the capabilities of the human mind to come up with new and advanced theories and technology that are going to help the American public and, for that matter, the world populations. Uh, I just I can't even envision what it's like to be in your position and all the things that you know about well, it's, it's kind of you to say. Uh, it's interesting being here in the catbird seat, and I would, I would just say that all of these technologies are a reflection of our own innate intelligence, of our own mind, and so to the extent they're problematic, that is a flaw within us, and to the extent that they can do things to help us, that is our better graces as well. So I would just urge people to remember that technology is often a, a reflection of our flawed nature um, and are great great you know and another point and maybe i'm off the rails here a little bit ian and correct me if you think i'm wrong but i am so glad so glad that some schools and teachers and people in business etc are starting to make cutbacks on what people can do with their noses up against their smartphones 24 7 365 our kids basically treating uh the smartphones as kind of the bible and staying religiously with that thing 24 7 i think we We've got to make some cutbacks and get back to more personalized communication. How would you respond to that? Well, I think that when it comes to our kids, there's certainly something to be said about making sure there isn't over-dependence. When it comes to adults, just like I trust someone who's 18 to, to know whether smoking is right for them or if they're 21, drinking is right for them, I think that it's much the same in use with the technology, or, or rather overuse with the technology. Um, it's not for me. I try to limit the amount of time I use it, but I also put a great deal of faith in individuals. And with that, I must say, I have to hop to another call, but I thank you so much for having me on your show. No, and it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Ian Adams, Vice President of Policy for Tech Freedom, thank you very much. Thank you. And I think he's gone. All right, well, a very interesting segment because I am at a loss when it comes to all this tech freedom and technology in general. And it's a subject that I've got a lot to learn about, but I appreciate him being on the program and uh, sharing with us uh, about his company in particular, Tech Freedom. Thank you very much. You know, i got to tell you, I've been on kind of a self-imposed diet since probably a yeah, week before Thanksgiving. And when I do the advertisements for various restaurants and places to go eat, I tell you what, I just start drooling all over the microphone. And this place, Edith's Cafe, Edith's Cafe, I urge you to stop over and enjoy, literally sit down and really enjoy a meal at 144 East Highway 81 in Burley, right across from the golf course. You can't miss it. They've got menu choices that just absolutely are phenomenal. Knock your socks off, delicious. And then they've got dinner specials in the evening, oh my goodness, like ribeye steaks and pulled pork sandwiches, and of course, don't forget, barbecued ribs and smoked brisket. Oh, prime rib. Ah, you're going to love the food and the people. They really care about your dining experience at Edith's Cafe, 144 East Highway 81 in Burley. You stop in, see them today. 
Right now, I'd like to remind you that our weather forecast brought to you by Scarrow's Meats at 331 North Road, Jerome, with Don Scarrow and the crew. Oh, they are good. Oh, the meats are delicious. Whether like the marinated pork ribs or the tri-tips or the different variations of the bacons or the sausages and the bratwurst. I love bratwurst. You better get a hold of them today. 324-7657. Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Fairly nice day for today, and we're on a warming trend for the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Partly sunny skies, we are expecting a high of 38. Winds out of the west at about 8 miles an hour for tonight. Some clouds could be rolling in. Steady temperature right around 33. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies, high of 42 with an overnight low of 31. For Friday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers mostly in the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies, high of about 40. And then for Saturday, partly sunny, 43. It's like mid-40s for Sunday, Monday. That's a look at your weather forecast for us. Appreciate it, Gina. Thank you very much. And Don Scarrow and the crew at Scarrow's Meats over in Jerome. 331 North Road, Jerome, to be exact. Say, come on in. Come on over. They've got the best of meats for you, your family, and any occasion. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Calls are welcome and appreciated. So give me a jingle on the landline at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll talk about anything you want to for the next couple of minutes on Zebeth Ranch. I noticed in the newspaper, this really offended me, and it should a lot of people, that there are comparison breakdowns right here in the Magic Valley. There was a letter put in the uh, Times News a couple of days ago from a Don Hammond in Kimberley. And he was really denigrating and uh, putting out in revolting fashion how he compared the Republican Party today by the word Republican and the R being replaced with Russian Party. First of all, Don, if you really do some uh, due diligence and study, you will find out that Russia is not our biggest problem. Russia is certainly not our biggest adversary right now by any stretch of the imagination. The Chinese have had their intent blatantly open and honest for many, many years in this country that they want anything and everything they can get or provide to put us in second or third place or even lower, and China really the biggest threat. And when you start denigrating people on behalf of a party affiliation saying that, uh, oh, well, they're all, they're all commies or they're all affiliated with people that are, are out to get us, that's a misnomer and it's completely wrong. The quote in the paper is as follows, the R Republican Party is moving from being the Republican Party to becoming the R Russian Party. I'd like to have more of an explanation where you came up with this incompetency and this idiocy, and uh, I found that to be very offensive, very offensive. That would imply that the Republican Party is comprised of traitors to this United States of America. That offended me. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. There have been rollbacks on the school lunch program, and I absolutely hail and salute the Trump administration for making those rollbacks. I don't know if you saw this story in the paper the other day. It says the Trump administration last Friday proposed rolling back nutrition guidelines for school meals that had been promoted by Michelle Obama as part of her campaign in combat of child obesity. Well, first of all, let's stop right there. As we know, we did a lot of segments on this program regarding Obama's attitude on what these kids should be eating in the school lunch program, and they weren't. The kids were not eating that food because it was so terrible. Kids were taking their trays of food, dumping them in the wastebasket, and costing billions of dollars in waste. And they weren't eating, they weren't getting their nutrition, and they weren't students that really wanted to stay in school and learn because their minds were on getting a cheeseburger at the local McDonald's down the road. 
Well, I'll tell you what, I think it is great, absolutely great, that now this administration is letting ha- schools have more flexibility and much more reduction of waste, of throwing the food away and still providing nutritious and appetizing meals. I think it's wonderful. I'd like to hear what you have to say. A lot of people don't know what are go- what's going on in various subject matter as far as, well, I didn't know that they were going to roll back on the uh, uh, regulations on school lunch menus. Yes, they are. Yes, they are, and deservedly so. Now the kids in schools all across this country are going to be getting much more delicious and nutritious food. And I salute the Trump administration for what they're doing. Calls are welcome, and I'd like to hear from you, so give me a jingle on the landline, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. By the way, uh, we've got so many better things to do and worry about, but it's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, Chicken Dinner Road, we've talked about this. It's uh, up there in the Marsing area. And uh, I know some people who live on this road. They're good friends of mine. But PETA has said that uh, they want the name change from Chicken Dinner Road to just Chicken Road because they were offended of people having and enjoying chicken dinners. I certainly hope that our legislature... Uh, doesn't spend any time on this at all. Absolutely. Uh, Republican uh, Representative Scott Syme introduced a concurrent resolution urging fellow lawmakers to support the existing name of Chicken Dinner Road. That should be the end of it. There shouldn't be any more time taken on this. Just send a letter to PETA and tell them that you really don't care what their thoughts are or how they want to change the name. It's none of their business and by no means are the people that live on Chicken Dinner Road going to go along with a name change? Can you imagine all the headaches and heartaches that that would cost? I mean, business cards. I know horse trainers that live over in that area. I mean, people that have maybe in-home businesses. And all because of PETA, they'd have to take off the chicken dinner and just put Chicken Road on it? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. The state of politics today. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I want to tell you, too, about our dear friends, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. They go all over to serve you. And when I say that, I mean they've got those big service trucks that are warmed up early in the morning and ready to go. Boy, I mean, keep that motor running. And they go all over helping farmers and ranchers and dairymen with the tires that need to be changed, fixed, and or replaced. They've got them all. That's right. Great service to the rural community. And I urge you, whether it's a backhoe, skid steer, whatever it might be, you just get a hold of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All the tires for all the vehicles and all the different tread designs. They've got it right there at all seven locations of Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, including the best in brake service, front and alignment, shocks and struts and batteries personality and service reign supreme with lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and buell mike and jerome the twist family and paul daniel on pole line in twin falls and trent on overland in burley the best your magic valley les schwab tire centers Tomorrow on the program, being Thursday, we've got an open forum first thing in the morning, and then we're going to visit with Penny Maine over at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. And uh, then we're going to, I believe, have an interview with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy. At 9.30, we've got the lawyers coming on the air with the Pacific Legal Foundation on another case that they're working on. And uh, then, of course, Cash County School Days, and we're going to have a really, really nice visit with our friends at Western Way Services about the pink garbage cart system for helping fight breast cancer. And uh, then we're going to all line up and get ready to run to our dear friends over in Burley for Zeb's Lunch Bunch. It's going to be a lot of fun at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. And if you're not sure where it's at, it's at 611 North Overland Avenue in Burley. We start at 1130, and we just love to have you be a part of it tomorrow. Don't forget America's Diner, Denny's restaurant Zeb's Lunch Bunch 
tomorrow, okay? Uh, I think that's going to do it. And then next week, uh, on Thursday, I'm going to be gone, as a matter of fact. And I'll tell you right up front, we're going to be taking a couple of days, Deanna and I, and we're going to just take a little vacation starting next week. And uh, Gina and Sharon are going to be jumping in and filling the boots for this program. They do a wonderful job. But uh, Deanna and I, I guess lately it's been me, Marl, and anybody else. We've had some health problems, and we want to kind of get everything all put back in ship shape and be ready to rock and roll on Zeb at the Ranch. So we're going to take a few days off going into February, and I just wanted to pass that along to you. That's it for today. We always end the program by saying the way things were, the way things ought to be, and the four words that mean the most to us are, in God we trust. See you tomorrow morning at 8.06. God bless.